I'm Janice Crowley from Wichita Collegiate School. Mr. Trumbold and I are here today to show you a few of the lab techniques that you will be needing for your general reactions lab experiment on pages 43 through 47. We're not going to go through all the procedures with you. You definitely need to read this over, but we're going to go over some of the points that you see in your worksheet that you wouldn't normally be able to answer unless you watch this video. And there are techniques that are better seen than they are reading about them. So that's why we're doing this pre-lab for you today. The first thing that I wanted to talk about, perhaps you remember from middle school, the proper procedure for testing acids and bases. I'm going to put a chemical into the speaker. I'm not going to let you know what chemical it is. I could have had an unlabeled one. I'm putting one there. I'm putting another chemical here. And in the third beaker, I have yet another chemical. Now, the proper technique is to have tested all the chemicals with red and blue litmus paper. I have red litmus and I have blue litmus. Now, sometimes students forget what color means what. I try to have them remember a mnemonic device, blue bee base. So if you make the red litmus turn blue, that means it's going to be a base. If the blue litmus turns red, then that means it's going to be an acid. And if the red stays red and the blue stays ba uh, blue, then that means you have a neutral substance. So I'm just simply going to come over here and use the same stirring rod. I'm going to put three stirring rods in here. And if I'm testing to see if this one is an acid or base, I'm going to, I'll start with the first one, simply drop a liquid onto the red litmus. And I can't determine anything yet. It's just red. Now I'm going to put it onto the blue. And now, can you see that the blue turned red? So if you remember what I said earlier, if the blue turns red, I have an acid. Let's try the second one. I'm going to put the second one and just touch a drop to the blue litmus and it stays blue. Can't determine anything yet. Now I'm going to use that same liquid and touch the stirring rod to the red litmus. And do you see that it's turned blue? And remember, blue be base. I'm going to take this third liquid and touch it to the blue paper. And again, we can't determine anything yet. Blue is blue. And I'm going to touch this last paper, and the last paper stays red. Please write on your sheet what the last item is. Is it acidic, basic, or neutral? The next demonstration that I want to go over is the concept of heating stuff and using cobalt glass. If you're going to heat a substance that's going to give off a bright light, you need to hold the cobalt blue in front of the item that you're going to be looking at. So if you and your lab partner are burning something in the flame, you need to hold this and look at the magnesium that you're burning through the cobalt blue. Otherwise, you're going to have white spots that you're seeing all day long and it can cause headaches. So definitely hold that cobalt blue glass up when you're heating the magnesium strip. It looks like this. The next thing that I want to point out is when they tell you to heat something horizontally in the flame, this is what they mean. You're going to hold it in and out horizontally in the flame, just like this. And you're going back and forth. And this procedure usually takes a little bit of time. You're going to have to be patient on that. And I'm not going to hold it there for the whole duration. I'm going to go ahead and put a stopper in it. And we're going to look at that in a few moments. Now the next one I want to show you is a fun one that the students like. 
but you need to ex exercise caution. So definitely have your test tube rack out when you're doing this one. If I'm testing for a gas, let's say, for example, I'm going to add this liquid to this test tube. And I'm going to drop a piece of metal into the test tube. And you probably can see already that there's some bubbling going on. So one of the nice things about this experiment is I can just briefly stopper it like this to collect the gas. I'm going to let the stopper out again. And I'm going to bring what's called a flaming splint to the mouth and watch what happens. Did you hear that pop? Let's do that again. We're going to let that gas build up for a moment and let it mix with enough oxygen and do you hear that pop? Did you see it? Okay. That popping sound means that I have a presence of hydrogen gas. Okay. So flaming splint popping sound, hydrogen gas. Now let's try another one here. I'm going to set this one aside. And some of these reactions are very exothermic, so don't pick up your test tubes with your hands if you're removing them. 